Okay, so we still have some students who don't know how to take uh, Cornell notes, right? So first go into your email and then go into the Rubik's Cube, okay? And then click on Google Drive and then go into Google Classroom and then you're going to go into your class period, okay? Right now I'm recording in first period, so that will be Choi Math 2 period 1. During period 4 or 5, you'll go in there, okay? So then once you go into the folder, you will be able to find your last name, first initial, and then Cornell Note template, right? Okay, so please make sure you go in there. It should always be blank. If for some reason you don't have the Cornell Note template or, you know, um, you, you just filled it up, then you have to make another one, right? Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to click on File, make a copy, and then you have to change the title to your last name, first initial, and then I want you to write different forms of quadratic equation because that is our topic, okay? And so now what we have just done is create a new file. However, this folder, this document right here, is not going to be in the correct folder. So what you're going to do is click on the folder right here next to the title, okay? And then you're going to make sure you put it in the right place so you can find it when you turn it into Google Classroom, okay? So click on Classroom, but click on the little triangle, okay? And then find Choi Math 2, period 1, or 4, or 5. Make sure the check mark is right next to that, okay? And then I want you to click on Move, okay? So now your stuff is in the correct folder. I'm going to go ahead and click on Fit so you can see. Actually, I'm going to make it 200% because otherwise you can't see. So there you go. I'm going to put my name, and then I'm going to put my day. Today happens to be October 8th. This is 2014 at the time I'm recording this. And the topic is going to be the same as my title, Different Forms of Quadratic equation okay and this is period one right now but again if you're in period four you'll put that if you're in period five you'll put that and now here's my essential question how do you change standard form oops how do you change standard form into factor and vertex for I'm sorry, what's your question? No? Okay, so there you go. Now, we're going to start from here, okay? So, what I want you to do is first, go ahead and write this question. I was looking at your paper, and I noticed that a lot of you knew how to do the vertex form, okay? So, let's do this. Convert the standard form into vertex form, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to write my question, okay? And here's the question I'm going to give you. X and then it's squared. So I'm going to put insert equation, okay? And then I'm going to click on the third one that says X to the B power, okay? And, oops, I forgot. I need to put X and then press the arrow button to the right one time. And now the cursor is blinking and it's small. So I put the 2 and then I click on the arrow button one more time, the right arrow button. And now the cursor is big. So now what I'm going to do is erase this big X over here. So then now I have X squared, right? And then I'm going to put plus 6X plus 1. And so this is the standard form that we're going to change into vertex form. So we have been using algebra tiles, okay, in order to get the answer for this. And yesterday, you guys were like rock stars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause my video. And using the algebra tiles that I gave you, I want you to go ahead and give me the answer, okay? Ready? Go. Okay, so let's go ahead and convert the standard form into vertex form. 
And what you just did right now was you had a chance to use your algebra tiles to try and come up with the answer. And what you got was in parentheses, right? And then go ahead and insert equation again because we have to put um, the squared, right? So new equation and then click on the x to the b power. And then in parentheses, put x plus 3, because that was the answer you came up with. And then you press the arrow button one time and put the 2. And press it one more time, and now it's regular size, OK? And then minus 8. And so when you actually use the algebra tiles, it was very easy because it was visual. But as you can see, I don't know if you remember, but when I tried to do the negative side and the positive side, you were confused. Right? Okay. And that is understandable because we cannot use algebra tiles for everything. So now it's time for me to help you connect, okay, the algebra tiles into math. Because some of you, just pure mathematical form, okay? Because some of you, it's just easy that way. Okay? So let me just explain to you. I drew the picture of your answer on the board. You can go ahead and look at your own diagram on your desk, okay? But I want to explain to you how to do this using math, okay? So I want you to go ahead and write down the steps over here, OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the 6, OK? Because 6 is the number next to the x. Those are the rectangles. Now, if you look at your diagrams, there were 6 rectangles. So how did you know that there were supposed to be 3 rectangles on both sides, both sides of the square, guys? How did you know that? Because there's 2 sides. You have to divide it by 2, right? So then you're going to divide by 2, OK? And once you divide it by 2, then you realize that there are little squares that you need to fill in, OK? So when you looked at the little squares, how did you figure out how many little squares you need? In your eyes, it's very easy to tell, but really, you are supposed to square the 3, OK? So once you divide the 6 into 2, then you have to square it. So that's how you got the 9, OK? But then once you got the 9, so let me go ahead and add another equal sign over here. Because when you're using algebra tiles, you can just say equals and just use the picture to get the answer. But actually, this is what happened, OK? You put x squared. You have x squared, right? And then you have plus 6x. And then what you did was you divided the 6x by 6 by 2, which is 3. And then you squared it, which gave you 9, OK? And then guess what? If you randomly add 9, that's not OK, is it? How can you just randomly add 9 for no reason? If there's an equal sign, you got to do the same thing to the other side to create balance. But you can't do that because this is only one side of the equal sign. So you know what you got to do? you got to go ahead and subtract the 9 again. So that way, 9 minus 9 is 0, right? And then we have to add 1 after that, OK? All right? And so then, let me go ahead and explain what we just did. Since we added 9, now subtract 9 to erase. Oh, maybe I shouldn't put erase. But we have to erase the trace, OK? If we're adding 9 for no reason, we got to make sure we get rid of it so it just disappears, like we never did anything. But there was a reason why we added the 9, right? The reason why we added the 9 was because x squared plus 6x plus 9. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, OK? That, did I really do it? OK. No, I didn't. How come I can't highlight it? Then at least can I change the text? No, it won't let me do anything. That sucks. But anyhow, the x squared, let me then put parentheses so that you can see. Okay, the x squared plus 6x plus 9, that is actually the same as this one right here, the x plus 3 squared. That's why we had to put that in. And then we did negative 9 plus 1, and they gave, that gave us the negative 8. So then the next step over here is for us to combine negative 9 with 1. Okay, so now this is the mathematical method, and this is what my Algebra 2 students learn, okay? And in an Algebra 2 class, of course, I don't give them Algebra tiles. I make them just do it on their own, okay? So then now, and I just explain to them the mathematical way, 
Okay, and so if you are really good in math and you think mathematically, maybe this is easier for you. But I wanted to start you off with algebra tiles so that you would think that it is easier. So then now I'm going to give you a question, okay? And I want you to see if using my mathematical method and not the algebra tiles because you can't, okay? Because we have negatives. Let me see if you can solve this question correctly, okay? And the question is x squared minus 6x, okay? And then we're going to put plus 12 this time, okay? And, of course, because we cannot use the negative tiles, I want you to go ahead and try using um, the method right here, okay? Ready? Go. Okay, so there you go now. We're going to use the same steps, okay? And what did we do? We're, now, this time, we're going to look at what? Negative 6, because that's the number next to the x. That's the long rectangles. Then we're going to square it. So when we square it, it's going to give us what? 9. So I'm going to put that equals insert equation x squared. And then I'm going to have minus 6x, right? And then when I square the negative, negative 3, negative 3 times negative 3 is what? Positive 9. And I'm going to put this in parentheses because that is my perfect square. And so then I, I already have, I added 9, so randomly out of nowhere. So I'm going to subtract the 9, and then I'm going to add the 12 because that is the 12 that I already have right here, isn't it? Okay, so since I added the 9 over here, I'm just going to subtract it here. And then I'm going to not forget the 12, and that's what happened, okay? So then what I'm going to do is since we added 9, subtract 9, okay? So these are the steps. These are really important steps, okay? So then now that equals what? X minus 3. Oh, I need to do insert equation, okay? So X minus 3 squared. And then negative 9 plus 12 is plus 3, okay? So then, of course, that was the next step, which was combine negative 9 with 12. And so now I am done. And at this point, you guys should be able to do any kind of uh, transformation from standard form into vertex form. That's not really a transformation, I'm sorry. But you should be able to convert from standard form into vertex form. Okay? I'm going to stop my recording here because I don't have enough time. And then I'm going to make a new recording for the next one. Okay? All right.